Imagine a society where the value of a bride is measured in heads of cattle, where the brother inherits the deceased brother's widow, and where peeing is an essential item of beauty. Now add to that the belief that in order to restore spiritual balance, a sacrifice must take place. Are you curious to know what this place is? Then get ready, because today Belo Mundo is taking you to South Sudan to meet the highest tribe in the world and explore a reality where traditions, sacrifices, and rituals are part of everyday life. South Sudan is a land of contrasts, vast savannas, imposing rivers and communities that live to the rhythm of nature. Since gaining independence in 2011, the country has faced great challenges, but still preserves an impressive cultural diversity. Among the peoples who live there, one group stands out for the unique way they approach life and see the world around them. Without big cities or advanced technology, they survive on what the land has to offer and maintain traditions that arouse curiosity in anyone who meets them. They are the Dinka, one of South Sudan's oldest and most fascinating ethnic groups, known for their rich and unique culture. Number 1. Who are the Dinka? The Dinka are a people who live in the vast savannas and marshlands along the River Nile in South Sudan. They preserve ancient traditions, speak a language called Nilotic, and share cultural ties with other traditional groups in the region, such as the Nuer. With a population of over 4 million, this community is organized into villages, each with its own customs and way of life. But despite the differences, there is something that unites all the Dinka, the deep bond with the land and the cattle. The Dinka's recent history has not been easy. At the end of the 20th century, when South Sudan was still part of Sudan, the government tried to impose Islamic law in the region, sparking an intense civil war. The Dinka found themselves in the middle of conflicts with Arab militias and even with the New Air themselves. However, in 1999, the two groups signed the Pact of Wunlit, sealing peace between them. The conflict with the central government, however, only ended in 2005 with a peace agreement that brought some stability to the region. Number 2. Culture in Dinka society, life is structured around clans and extended families, where each person has a clear role. Respect for elders is essential, and the elders who possess the wisdom accumulated over generations are responsible for making the big decisions in the community, from marriages to herding issues. Daily life in the settlements is deeply linked to the land and the climate. During the drought, they take the herd to the rivers in search of water, and in the rainy season, they all return to the villages to plant millet, the staple food for the community. In this coming and going, simplicity and versatility are fundamental. They don't accumulate unnecessary items, and each task has its own person responsible. The women carry their belongings balanced on their heads, while the men lead the herd. And to ensure that they are always ready to move, the houses are circular huts made of clay and straw, which makes them easy to dismantle and rebuild. Number 3. Religion and Spirituality Spirituality is at the heart of Dinka life. Within some clans, spiritual leadership is passed down from father to son in a structure known as patrilineal where the lineage and the role of chief priests are passed down from the paternal side. These spiritual leaders, called Masters of the Fishing Spear, have a respected and influential position, validated by myths and stories that reinforce their role as mediators between the people and the ancestral spirits. For the Dinka, any situation, from a small lie to something as serious as murder, can require a sacrifice to restore spiritual balance. In their prayers and songs, they ask for protection and plenty for their flocks. 
believing that keeping the animals healthy is a way of pleasing the spirits and ensuring harmony for the community. This connection with the spiritual is in everything. Natural phenomena, such as the wind, are seen as manifestations of the ancestors, and more extreme weather events are interpreted as signs from the spirit world. And of course, all of this connects to cattle, which for them are a sacred gift from the Nihalic god, carrying a blessing in each animal. Number four, the importance of cattle. Just as cattle are sacred in India, for the Dinka tribe, they are the center of life. Their relationship with these animals shapes practically every aspect of their culture and daily practices, becoming a fundamental part of their identity. This bond with cattle is so strong that it distinguishes the Dinka from other ethnic groups, whether in villages or cities. Cattle really are the heart of everything. As well as providing milk, consumed pure or turned into butter and ghee, a type of oil often used for cooking, they offer essential materials for everyday life. The animal's skin is used to make carpets, drums, belts, and ropes. Even the horns and bones are reused as tools, ornaments, and even decorative items. Nothing is wasted, and this connection with cattle goes beyond sustenance. It is reflected in social status, rituals, and even family alliances. Number five, marriage and dowries. While we're on the subject of family alliances, nothing exemplifies this better than marriage. And you're probably wondering, where do cattle come into this? We'll get to that in a moment. In various regions of Africa, the practice of paying dowries still exists. In Mozambique, for example, there is Lobolo, an ancestral tradition that involves paying a dowry to the bride's family. The idea is to compensate for the loss of a daughter and to recognize the investment made in her upbringing. And we're not talking about a token gift. The Lobolo can include livestock, money, clothes, food, and even other goods. There are even apps that calculate the bride's value in heads of cattle or money. In fact, we have a video here on the channel about the bridal market, where the dowry ranges from pigs to snakes as payment. If you're curious, check it out after this video and see how these markets turn women's lives into a real hell on earth. But back to the Dinka. Although there's no app for calculating dowries, marriage here also functions as a real barter market. And for the Dinka, cattle are more important than anything else. It defines prestige, wealth, and of course, the possibility of getting married. Here, being rich isn't about having money in the bank, because banks don't even exist. For the Dinka, wealth is measured in heads of cattle, and ownership of these animals is what really counts. And how is the dowry paid to the bride's family determined? This depends on the woman's beauty and height. The taller the woman, the more expensive the dowry. And believe me, the price can be exorbitant. After all, there's no shortage of height around here. In fact, we'll talk more about this in a moment. Number six, price list. For some families, the price is already set by the height of the corset the bride wears. The higher the corset, the more cattle they expect to receive for the bride's hand. In some cases, this amount can exceed 200 head of cattle. But corsets are not only worn by women, men wear them too. If women wear it to show how much they are worth, men wear it to show how much they have. That's right. The size and beauty of a Dinka man's corset reflects whether he comes from a wealthy cattle-owning family and is able to pay a high dowry for a bride. It's as if the corset is his bank statement, indicating that, yes, he can afford the amount required for a wedding. In addition, the colors of corsets say a lot. A red corset, for example, indicates that the boy is between 15 and 25 years old while a yellow corset says that he's over 30 and ready for marriage. 
So, with a quick glance at the corset, anyone knows the man's status and stage of life, almost like a visual code that everyone understands. Number 7. Rites of Passage But cattle culture isn't just about marriage. Another curious fact is the rites of passage. Among the Dinka, coming of age is a serious matter, and every detail is steeped in tradition and symbolism. For the girls, these rituals are moments of pure celebration. The family and community get together to mark this new phase with songs and dances. It's the moment when she is officially presented as an adult, ready to take on responsibilities and be recognized as a woman. For boys, on the other hand, the path is a little more challenging. The transition to adulthood comes with scars, literally. With sharp blades, they receive marks on their foreheads, drawn in a straight line and with a specific pattern. The pain? Endured in silence. This is the test of strength and resilience that each young man faces. When a young Dinka reaches puberty, he takes part in an important ritual, sacrificing a bull. The color of the chosen animal's coat becomes part of its name and will accompany it for life. Salva Kiir, the president of South Sudan, for example, is called Mayardit, which means purple-haired bull. But of course, this is just one of many examples. Other names also follow the same style, such as Mabior, which means white bull, and Marial, black and white bull. In other words, the surname will depend on the hair of the cattle. And that's not all. Cows aren't just important for getting married or creating surnames. The Dinka also use cattle excrement to beautify themselves during traditional festivities. Number 8. Cattle Urine and Feces for Beauty It sounds like a lie, but it's not. Dinka hygiene practices have a traditional touch that may seem curious to outsiders. Many men use bovine urine to wash their hair, believing that it helps to lighten the strands and keep the scalp clean. In addition, the Dinka also burn cow dung to generate a smoke which, when passed through the body, serves as a natural insect repellent and also as a kind of cultural perfume. The soot from the burnt dung is applied to the skin, especially during the rainy season when mosquitoes are at their most intense. Would you dare to use this shampoo or repellent? Let us know in the comments. Number 9. Polygamy and Widow Marriage Returning to the subject of marriage, an interesting fact is that polygamy is common among the Dinka. But what exactly is polygamy? Basically, it's the custom of having more than one spouse at the same time. In the case of the Dinka, men can have several wives, but only if they can afford to support them. As we said before, wealth here is measured in heads of cattle. So only those who own a lot of livestock can afford to have several wives, since the dowry, the groom's gift to the bride's family, is an important requirement. This system also reinforces community unity, as marriage between different clans creates strong bonds between families and increases support between them. Life in these communities is very collaborative. The co-wives take care of each other and help raise everyone's children, as if they were a single family. In this way, solidarity between clan members is strengthened and everyone is well looked after. Another interesting point is levirate marriage. If a woman is widowed, she can marry the deceased's brother. This custom guarantees protection for the widow and her children so that they continue to be supported by the family. Instead of being excluded, the widow and children remain under the care of the new husband, keeping the family together and economically stable. Number 10. World's Tallest Remember how we talked about stratospheric gifts depending on the height of the Dinka bride? That's right. What makes the Dinka world famous is their impressive height. 
with an average of 6 feet for men and 5 feet for women, many exceed 6 feet, placing them among the tallest people in the world, alongside the Tutsi of Rwanda and the Maasai of Kenya and Tanzania. This characteristic has gained international prominence, especially for figures such as Manu Tibol, the renowned NBA player, who was 7 feet tall, impressing with his skill as well as his height. Another example is model Alec Weck, also of Dinka origin, known for defying beauty standards with her striking looks and height of 5 feet 11 inches. But what explains this extraordinary height? Experts believe that the Dinka's height is the result of a combination of genetics, diet and lifestyle. Genetics certainly plays an important role, as the Dinka have a natural predisposition to growth a trait that may have been reinforced by the selection of taller partners over the generations. In addition, a diet rich in milk and beef, full of protein and essential nutrients, helps to develop bone and muscle structure. An active lifestyle, especially grazing and other intense physical activities, also contributes to the development of a tall and strong body structure. And so we end our journey through the secrets of the Dinka, a people of imposing height, unique customs, and a deep connection with their traditions. If you enjoyed exploring this fascinating culture and want to continue traveling through topics as incredible as this one, don't forget to follow and activate notifications so you don't miss the next videos. To those of you who have watched us so far, thank you very much and we'll see you in the next episode of our Bello Mundo adventure.